1 Corinthians 7, 32 through 35. But I would have you without carefulness, free from cares, free from anxiety, free from worries. We're not to have worries as Christians. We're to cast them upon the Lord. We're to cast our cares on the Lord. Now this is something we'll battle with and something we'll struggle with. But ultimately, we give them over to him. He that is unmarried cares for things that belong to the Lord. Anxious about the master's calls. An unmarried man is free from concern with him, himself with the Lord's affairs. Now, this can be true, but this isn't necessarily true. Um, how he may please the Lord. He aims to please the Lord, strives to please the Lord. And what he's saying is, if you're unmarried, you can solely focus on striving to please the Lord. Now, there's unmarried men that call themselves Christians that do not at all do this. So this ain't every case scenario. And then there's Christian men who strive to please the Lord through being married, and their wife encourages and helps them to where they can do more with their wife than they ever would on their own. And I think that's intent for marriage. But Paul's purpose is don't, if you're striving so much for the Lord, don't let marriage become a hindrance to you. Stay single. I think that's what Paul's saying. Why mess up what's working? And for unmarried people like me, that's something I gotta consider when dating and considering marriage. Is it something that pushes me more towards the Lord is it something that drifts me away and if it's something that drifts me away is it something God would want me to do verse 33 but he who is married careth for things that are of the world but a married man is sure to be concerned with the matters of this world not saying unmarried man isn't how to please he may please his wife. Devotion his devotion is divided between the Lord and his wife. And, and honestly if the man chooses to put God first, then his wife's going to be pleased with him in a way. She should be, if she's right with the Lord. Oftentimes the two don't come together. Oftentimes and I think that's what Paul's talking about. You can do everything to strive for the Lord and your wife not be happy with you. Why do you want to be in that scenario? This is a part of why, reason why it's very important to be equally yoked. Not just be both Christians, but be on the same level where you push each other further. And your devotion is sold out for not each other, but for the Lord. That way, through the Lord, you can have a healthy marriage and a healthy love for each other because he's the one guiding it, not you. And, and, yeah, this can be a concern in the world, but if God's put first, it's more of a spiritual concern, which puts it back in its proper place and is the type of marriage God would want. There is difference between a wife and a virgin. Unmarried and a married woman. The unmarried woman careth for the things of the Lord. This also isn't completely true. I've seen women who continually aren't happy seemingly unless they have that relationship. That she may be holy with both hand, in body and in spirit. Pure for the Lord. Dedicated for the Lord. Set apart for the Lord. We as Christians should be this way. This isn't saying we weren't, we've not made mistakes, because we have. It's saying that we need to be set holy for Him now, that we're His. But she that married cares for things of the world, how she may please her husband and her kids. Kids come in that picture as well. And oftentimes, the things that mess up families, dynamic is God not being first. What the kids want to come first. What the husband wants comes first. 
rather than what the Lord expects and wills and desires and is commanded coming first. And I will speak for your own profit, not that I may cast a snare upon you, but for that which is comely and that which may attend upon the Lord without distractions. So what he's saying, it's, it's best to stay single because you're not distracted by keeping your wife happy. Now, like I said, there's certain instances where the guy's more focused on the Lord because of his wife. But then there are certain instances where they may have not really given the God-given thought into marriage because their marriage is a constant struggle that pulls them away from the Lord. And I think that is where Paul's speaking to. Don't let your marriage become a pull away from the Lord. It's better not to get married than for that to happen. 